Hello there, this is my Hadad here again. Let's start directly doing the lab of the Hello package. So we have this lab over here, many points to pass through, and then we're going to do it point by point. Before we start, I just want to show you about the lab scenario, which is the same one as we were working in the previous lecture. We have router 1 connected to router 2 on their Ethernet 1 interface, and they are on the subnet of 192.168.12.0. Router 1 has dot 1 and Router 2 has dot 2. Both routers will be configured inside the area 0.0.0.0, which is the backbone area. So let's see what we have to do now. Point number 1. All IP addresses are already configured on the picture. Okay, so I have already configured uh, the IP addresses as on the picture. And uh, I have already put the picture again on top of my head so we can follow what we are doing. Point number two, ping from router one to Ethernet one of router two. Do you have a reply? So now we are just trying to check if we have configured the IP addresses correctly. Let me go to router one. And from here, I have to go to new terminal. And I say ping 192.168.12.2. And we can see that I'm able to ping from router one to Ethernet one of router two. Okay. So this step is also done. Number three, configure OSPF on router one and advertise the connected network. So we need to enable OSPF on router one. I will put router ID 1.1.1.1 and then uh, we will advertise the connected network, which is we have only one network now, which is 192.168.12.0. Okay, I will go to router one and from here I will go to routing OSPF. In instances, we can, let's tell up, we, uh, we create a new instance, but what you can do is just, you can double click also on it, and then you can put 1.1.1.1, that's the router ID, I want it to be the default. And then I have to go to networks, and I will advertise the connected network, which is 192.168.12.0 slash 24, and it will be on the backbone area. So this is just like a review about what we have done in the previous lab. Okay, so we have done this, that's fine. Point number four, configure OSPF on router 2. We will give it router ID 2.2.2.2 and advertise the connected network. Also, we will do that. And then they said enable OSPF on Ethernet interface, Ethernet 1 interface only. Okay, so it's similar to what we have done in the uh, router, router 1, but we, here we just need to enable OSPF on Ethernet 1 uh, interface only. Let's uh, go directly to router 2, and then again I go to routing, OSPF. The, here I will put the router ID 2.2.2.2. And then on the network I will enable 192, I will advertise 192.168.12.0 slash 24 inside the backbone area and the third point they ask us to do is to let the OSPF work on Ethernet 1 only okay so what we can do we can just create here a new OSPF and then here I say I want Ethernet 1 to have the OSPF enabled on it only apply and okay Okay, let's see now if we have neighborship. And we can see router 2 has just formed neighborship with router 1. We can see the router ID over here. And these are the LSA that was received. Okay, so this point is done. Now, the question is why do we need to enable it on Ethernet 1 interface only? Because this is needed for the rest of the lab. We are going to work on the interface uh, Ethernet 1 uh, to change the hello package. Point number 5. Check if both routers form neighborship in OSPF. And we have just seen that they have formed neighborship, so that's fine. Point number six, change the hello interval on router 2 to 12 seconds. Remember we said that the router always send a hello uh, packet every 10 seconds, and it has a dead interval of 40 seconds. Okay, and that's to be able to form the neighborship. And this needs to be matched in order for the two routers to form the neighborship. Now they're asking us here in point number six to change the hello interval on router two to 12 seconds. Actually, it's on the Ethernet one of router two. Okay, because the Ethernet one is the one which has the OSPF enabled on it. Let's go directly and change it and see if we, uh, we will have neighborship. I will go to router two. In interface here, interfaces, I will go inside Ethernet one. But before, I just wanted you to check. We, we already have now the neighbor. It's working, no problem. We have seen it. Now I will go inside Ethernet 1 
And here you can see that uh, the hello interval is 10 seconds and the dead interval is 40 seconds. Uh, before I make the change, I will go also to router one, okay? And uh, also here you can see that the hello interval is 10, 10 seconds and the, and the dead interval is 40 seconds. That's by default on my critic. 10 is the hello, 40 is the dead interval. Let me go back to router two to make the change. I will put it now 12. Okay, the hello interval is now becoming 12 seconds. And when I say okay, we check the neighbors. You can see it has directly removed the neighborship because the hello interval doesn't match with the router one. If I go now to uh, to router one, and uh, we can see that it's still having the neighbor with router two because it has to wait a little bit. Remember, it has a dead interval of 40 seconds. So it's not yet 40 seconds to be able to take it out from its neighbors, okay, the table here. So, but in a moment, a few seconds, you will see that it will also be, you see it's down now, state is down. And in a moment, you will see that we don't have neighbors. You see, it's finished. No neighborship anymore with router uh, two, okay, because we just changed the hello interval. So th do the router have neighborship? neighborship? No, they don't have. So this point is done. Point number seven, change the hello interval on router two back to 10 seconds. Is the neighborship formed again? Let me go again to router two. We will do the reverse what we have done in the previous uh, point. This is router two now. I will go to interfaces, to internet one. It is 12 seconds. Let me put it back 10. And then I will say, okay. And I go to neighbors. And we shall see in a, in a few seconds that the router two will be forming now neighborship with router one. You can see it here directly. And they started sharing LSAs and everything is fine now because they have both, they have the same hello interval now. Also, if we go to router one, we can see the same. This is router one now. I have neighbor with router 2, that is the router ID of router 2, and here are the LSAs. Okay, so point number 7 now, it is done. Is the neighborship formed again? Yes, it is formed, because they both have now same hello and table. Create an area 1 on router 2 and put its Ethernet 1 interface on this area. So what we are now trying to do also to check inside the hello packet, if we change the areas, like we put one router on one interface on one router in an area, which is connected to another interface of another router, but it's on a, another area. Okay, so in this case, we will put Ethernet 1 of router 1 on area 0, which is now on area 0, but we will change the area on Ethernet 1 on router 2, they are both connected to each other. They are both on the same subnet, but they are on two different areas. And we have seen in the previous lecture that if the areas are not the same, they cannot form neighborship. So we are going to do now this and see if we put Ethernet 1 of router 2 on area 1, not the backbone area, if they can keep having neighborship or not. So the point is to create an area 1 on router 2 and put Ethernet 1 interface on this area. And then we see if we if they lose the neighborship. Okay, I will go now to uh, router two. This is router two now. And then I will have to create a new area. We have this is the backbone area. I'll make plus and I will call it area one. Let's give it an ID, for example, 11.11.11.11. .11 Just to not mix with the router ID of 1.1.1.1. We can you can name it whatever you want. Okay, and we keep uh, the instance the same, and then I will say, okay, so this is uh, area one is created. Now, what we need to do, we need to put the interface Ethernet one or the advertised network that we have advertised inside this area. To do that, I will go to networks. Remember, here when we advertise this network, we said we put it in area backbone. Now, what I want to do, I want to put it in area one. Okay, and I will say, okay, and let's directly check the neighbors here is gone on router 2, directly. If I go to router 1, and uh, I'll put the neighbors, it's still there, but again, remember that it needs uh, some seconds, and in a few seconds, you will see that it will go off. So now we see it is down, and in a few seconds, we will see that it will remove it directly from the neighbor table. 
And that's another proof also that if you have two interfaces connected to each other, each one of them is on an area, then in this case, they will not form neighborship. Okay, let's see what we have to do, the upcoming points. Number eight, uh, we have created the area. We put Ethernet 1 of router 2 on this new area. And we've seen that the two routers, they lose their neighborship. Okay, point number nine. Put again Ethernet 1 interface in area 0 and check whether R1 and R2 inform neighborships again. So again, we have to go to router 2. We see no neighbors now. I will go to networks. And I will just say I want to put this inside the backbone area, which is the same area where Ethernet 1 of router 1 is connected to. And then I'll say OK. And on neighbors, we have to look now. In a few seconds, it's going to have neighborship. And here we go. You can see that this router, router 2, has now formed neighborship, OSPF neighborship with uh, router 1. And if we go to router 1, now this is router 1, and we see it has formed neighborship with router 2. Okay, so point number 9, we have put Ethernet 1 of router 2 again on area 0, the backbone area, and we've seen that they have formed neighborship again. The last thing we need to do is to play with the authentication. Also remember when I said that authentication, if we change the authentication on one of the routers, even though they have the same hello and the same dead interval and they are in the same area, but if you change the authentication, then in this case, they will not also form a neighborship. They are asking us here in point number 10, change the authentication in router 2 from none to simple and put a password 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So at this moment, both routers, they don't have authentication. So there is no password in any of the two routers. That's why they can form neighborship directly. That's by default. But uh, Microtik allow us to uh, put a password inside the OSPF. And in this uh, point number 10, they ask us to change the authentication and put it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So now I'm in router 2. Inside router 2, I'll go to interfaces and inside Ethernet 1. You can see over here, the authentication at this time is none. That's why we have neighborship. So if you look here, we have neighborship. And also on uh, router 1, we have the same thing. Okay, we don't have authentication. So what we need to do now, we have to change the authentication from uh, none to, we can put it MD5, we can put it simple. We will discuss about authentication later in this uh, course. But let's just, just me put it simple and I will give it a, a, the key or the password one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And the key ID we will keep it one. And we say, okay. And now you see directly neighborship has gone on router two. If we look again on router one, we still see the neighbor with router 2, but in a few seconds, it will also go away and it will be down. Okay. We wait a few seconds just to see it also on router 1. So now we see that it has the state down and in just a few seconds, it will take out the neighbor router 2. You see it now is gone. Okay. So point number 10, uh, we change the authentication and we put a password 123456 and uh, did the R1 and R2 lose the neighborship and we've seen yes, they have lost their neighborship. So this is the whole lab that uh, I wanted to show you. Before I finish it, let me just uh, take uh, the password uh, out from router 2 again and see if we, they can form a neighborship after we take it out. So I'll put none here and uh, no password and OK. This is router 2 and it shall now have a neighbor uh, with router 1 and here we go okay so this is what i wanted to show you in this lab this is uh, really uh, a detailed uh, lab of uh, uh, ospf uh, uh, hello package i hope that you enjoyed it and you found it informative for you and i will see you in the upcoming lecture